Kingdom Faith International Christian Center, where we're providing knowledge to build a people with a heart after God. And we thank God for those who are part of the Facebook that are following us. Uh, so I hope you've been blessed by the ministry. Don't forget to go to our website. It's www.kficc.com. And uh, you can find out some more videos there that can really bless you in terms of the word of faith that we have. With that being said, I'm going to pray and we're going to get right into it. Amen. Amen. How many enjoying the word? Amen. How many know the word has a way of uh, reconstructing your life? Amen. If you let it. If you let it, it is a process, but you got to let it happen. We're not talking about religion because religion is all about legalism and put you in a a bind where you have to do some things. We choose to do what we want to do. And that's the same way it is in God gives. God gives us an option to do it or not do it. And that's just how he operates. Amen. Amen. All right. So I'm going to pray and then we get right into the word of faith today. Father, we just want to thank you and give you praise for those who are here today. We ask that your grace and your anointing will come upon us as we minister the word of faith to those who are listening uh, today, even in person and even those by way of uh, Facebook. Uh, We ask in Jesus name that you just anoint this time to lift our hearts and give us an understanding that by faith, which is your word, because faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's how we receive information and how we process it in our everyday lives. So I yield myself to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Come on, Holy Spirit, take this vessel, clay, use it for the glory of God. And we're forever thanking, give you praise for today in Jesus' name. And everybody should say amen again. Today we're going to be talking about how to reach maturity. How to reach maturity. Say that with me. How How to reach reach maturity. maturity. If you have children, that's your that's your greatest desire. If you have kids, you want the kids not to remain kids. You want them to grow up to what? Take on responsibility to be what? Mature. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So maturity, it points to a process, not only to a process, but also it points to a path and a procedure one follows in, to, in order to obtain a goal. So God has a goal for all of us that once we receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our life, His goal is for you to come to an understanding of who you are in him, what you have received in him, how to appropriate it in everyday living, and how to be an effective witness to those who are lost. All right. So this is what we call the goal is a spiritual called spiritual maturity. That's what we're uh, we want to attain. After you receive Christ, there's everything you still you don't know a lot of things about Christ. But as you stay with Christ and stay with the word with the, the word of God is a teaching tool that God gives us, which is called the Bible. How many know that if we learn anything uh, in, in life, it sometimes comes out of a book. <laughs> Most of the time it should come out of a book. Sometimes we live. We learn by life experiences and sometimes that's the hard way to learn. So today what we're going to do, we'll be discussing how to develop maturity and then we're going to look at some scripture. First scripture you're going to look at is the book of Romans real quick. Go to Romans chapter number 12 and verse 1 and 2. And we're going to park it right there. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Paul was writing to the church at Rome. The word church means ecclesia, called out ones in terms of God is referring to a group of believers who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their life. Now are they on the process, what we call maturity. And now he has to give us, uh, educate us by the word of faith. And the word of faith gives us instructions how to obtain that. So again, it says here in Romans chapter number 12 and verse number one, and I'm going to read this out of the Amplified Version. It's going to read a little different from your version if you have a King James. So this is the Amplified Version. And it reads as following. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, he says, and I beg you in the view of all mercies of God to make a de- decisive dedication of your bodies. And this is presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice. Then he says, holy, devoted, consecrated, well-pleasing to God which is your reasonable, reasonable, it says, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. And then it goes on, it says here, second verse, and be not com- be conformed to this age, fashioned after or adapt to external superficial customs, but be transformed, cha- changed by the entire renewing of the mind, by its new ideals and its new attitudes, so that you may prove to yourself what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God, even the things which is good and acceptable and the perfect in his sight, it says here. The third verse says, for by grace, the unmerited favor of God given to me, 
I warn everyone of you everyone among you not to estimate or think of himself more highly than he ought and not to exaggerate opinions or his own importance, but to the rate of his ability with sober judgment, each according to the degree of faith appropriated by God to him. Now, this is packed with information. Information is important when you follow God. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So hearing means basically it's intellectual knowledge in which God wants to give you concerning his word. So, again, that's very important because some people think that faith is blind faith where you just jump off the cliff because you believe, you know, how many know that God's not interested in us doing things blindly? He's interested for us to know what we're doing in reference to the scripture. So the scriptures tells us here, as Paul was writing to the church, he's trying to let them know, first of all, you have to make a decisive decision to dedicate yourself to the Lord. How many know we have to do that daily? You have to make a decisive dedication to the Lord where you know that I'm uh, God is not only my savior, but he is my Lord. And that means Lord. That means he has control. He can call the shots in my life. He can direct me in a way that can process me in the way that I need to go. So he's trying to let them know that, first of all, you have to make that decision. That decision is very important because if you don't make that decision and you make it, you want others to make that decision for you. How many know it's just not going to happen? It's something that you got to want and something that you want to do. Then it goes on and says here, then it goes on and says all your members or your faculties and their living sacrifice. Then it goes on to the second verse, which I think is very, very important because he spells out how the renewing of the mind begins. It begins with, he says here in the second verse, be not conformed to this world's age. Then it says here about transforming or changing your mind. So changing your mind is a development that God puts grace upon our life for that to take place where you educate yourself about what God wills for you in terms of your relationship with him. What God wills for us is just not for a few people. It's for all of us. What God says to one, he says to all. So that's what he's saying here. There's no favoritism in God. God's not going to allow us to skip this process. Some people want to avoid the process. And the reason why they want to avoid the process is because it requires work. Somebody say work. And see, I don't know about you. If you've been taught and our society has taught us that work is something that's something that you want to get out of. <laughs> work is something that you've been taught that, you know what, uh, 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 that's for people who, well, <laughs> let me let me straighten that out. I don't want to say that. It, I'll put it this way. Most people, if you had a choice to go to work or go on vacation, you would go on what? Vacation. That's right. <laughs> so vacation simply means you 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 excuse yourself from taking responsibility of your own wow. production. Because yeah. see, work sometimes is not some work is good because God created us so that we can work and be productive. But see, sometimes that can be a turned upside down depending on who we're working for. But if you know your intentions is right in terms of work, what he's saying here, you need to work on yourself. You need to pay attention to self because your problem and your answer for success is coming through you through God. Now, how that's going to take place, he says the renewing of your mind. Then he talks about a rational, intelligent service. I can't say that a rational, intelligent service. So that means we're not serving God by how we feel. Because if I serve God how I feel, I probably wouldn't be standing up here today. Because <laughs> you said the just didn't walk by how they feel. The just walk by faith was to have an intellectual knowledge, a rational intellectual service, which is developed into what we call a spiritual worship. All this is done through the renewing of the mind. Now, I can't say this enough. I kind of said this before, that most people's problems that you and I are encountering and encounter through life starts not at your feet. It starts in your head. Yeah. Most of the problems that we encounter, we want to a lot of time is how you perceive things, how you process things in reference to who you are in terms of who you're in relationship with in terms of what he has said concerning you will put you in a different mindset because your reference is not only you. Some people's reference is their self, their, their self-reference in terms of my, 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 my makeup, how I grew up, my, my, the gifts that I have. And, and now it's self-driven. How many know God wants to be Christ-driven and not self-driven? 
And when you're Christ driven, it's about what Christ said about us in this process called walking by faith is something that you have to learn to do. So right now, if I can understand what it means to renew my mind, because my mind is what the rational, intelligent uh, service unto the Lord, as I will it so, as listen, as I will it so, not emotionally willed, you know, get in the atmosphere where I get get emotionally willed. So, no, it's when I will so. And if I will so, I'm in a place of understanding and the connection. Now, the worship can be pure because it flows in me, out of me, and through me, and out to someone else. Come on, can y'all say amen? Because most people want to be stimulated to the place where they are empowered to get in worship. Mm -hmm. And, and you know what? That That's good because when you first get saved, you need that because you're a babe. You don't understand. But when you understand worship is not worship is, is a relationship of who you are, that you can activate it anytime, regardless of anything that may be going on around you, but you have mature rationally, intelligently into that. Somebody say amen. So the renewing of the mind First Thessalonians 5 and 23, don't turn there. The Bible says that there's a man is composed of, composed of spirit, soul, and body. So that's our makeup. You have a spirit, you have a soul, and you have a body. Spirit, soul, and body. Now, not only that, but the Bible tells us that our, our, our body houses our spirit and our soul. Now, God has given us a spirit, soul, and body. So when we're born again, our spirit has been made alive or your heart has been made alive and in connection with God. Regeneration or being saved. And when you're saved, that means Christ has done something in your spirit to awaken you, to let you know that you belong to him and he belongs to you. And you've been covered by his blood. And his blood is the redemptive power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness puts us in relationship not to be condemned and looking at God through our eyes that we've been condemned or guilty. We can look at him now knowing that we've been saved and in access with the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of his blood, he is my substitute for my sins. Now I can receive his forgiveness, my God, and forgive myself and give myself a fresh start. <laughs> I, I get to because he did it. <laughs> Not because I did anything. He did it for me. And I have to keep that track, keep that track straight, keep that path straight throughout my walking relationship. If not, I feel like I'm working for him to give me what I need. When Jesus said the work is finished when he was on the cross, I need to how to walk with him in that knowledge that I don't have to go performance driven. Glory to God. I can go knowledge driven knowing that I've been re redeemed and saved by the blood of the Lamb. Somebody say amen. Amen. See, he's talking about knowing, not feeling your way. The Amen. devil has tricked the church sometimes to feel their way into salvation and feel their way into what God has blessed them and want them to re and work their way into what God has. So you work your way to death trying to figure out what God has for you and you be tired, burn out and so much so you be ready to leave God and have mindset on other things because it's too hard. How many know it ain't too hard? It's, this is the easiest way. <laughs> Because he done done all the work. Is that all right? Can I go a little bit further? Because he says renewing of the mind. In other words, change a retired. This is how we this. This is the I can close my Bible up right here because listen, I started out with the question how to what reach what maturity. So the how to starts with the renewing of the mind. Oh, y'all get that? It starts with the, it starts with the renewing of your mind. Yeah. Then it goes here and says, when you renew your mind, what's going to happen is, is that what's going to happen is it says it goes on. And it says this. It says that you will have new ideas, Ooh. new attitudes. Yeah. Then it says so that you can prove. Amen. So we can prove we can prove. Listen. This is powerful because what happens when, when you have a new mindset or new ideas, a new mindset, it changes your attitude. This is the part where a lot of people are going to trip up because they don't understand that 
in John 15, Jesus said, I'm the vine, you are the branches. He said, if you abide in me and I abide in you, he said, you will bring forth much fruit. Fruit. Well, the fruit has to deal with your conduct, attitude, and behavior. Your conduct, your attitude, and behavior. The fruit, what he's talking about is talking about the fruit of the spirit. Degrees of long suffering. Degrees of forgiveness. De- degrees of love. Uh, de- de- degrees of charity. All those things that he's talking about is what are behavior traits. It's behavior traits. So what God is saying that once you get saved, I, I need you to mature. I need you to mature. I need you to understand that you have to change who you are now. You have to allow me to change how you act. You have to allow me to change how you think about yourself and how you think about others. You can't treat people the way you used to treat people from your from your own self constitution, because now the constitution that you had had been ripped up. And now the new constitution is upon your heart called the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And now I'm giving you fivefold ministry for the perfecting of the saints. So you be no more children tossed to and fro that you understand the coming into knowledge of the son of God in relationship to who he is to you and how you operate in him through you is what you need to grow up into. Come on. Can y'all say amen? See, we're trying to work to get a lot of things that God said has already been done. But the one thing you need to concentrate on is your mind. You got to pay attention to how you think. Because sometimes your thinking can take you in wrong places. Sometimes your thinking can cause you to say the wrong thing. Sometimes your thinking can cause you to act the wrong way. So again, he says the importance is, is that, well, first of all, we have to renew our mind. Now, there's another scripture that points to what we're talking about. This is the point I want you to get before I go to this scripture. You need to understand the renewing in the mind is the process to maturity. My God, the renewing of the mind is the process. It is the what? The path, I said. It's not only the path, but it's the procedure uh, and how we obtain what we call spiritual maturity. Turn to Ephesians chapter number four, verses one through three. Are y'all still with me today? In Ephesians chapter number four, verses one through three, this is interesting because the scripture talks about just about what we're talking about here today. Mm-hmm. Ephesians chapter number four, is that what I said? And verse number one through three. I'm going to read this out of the Amplified Version also. Okay. Now, Ephesians chapter number four, one through three. Listen to this. This kind of sounds almost that what he said almost in Romans. Look, he said, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord. Come on. I appeal to you and beg to you to walk a life, a life, a life, uh, lead a life. I'm sorry. Lead a life worthy of divine calling. He says, says, calling to which you have been summoned with behavior, it says here. That is credit to the summons to God's service. This is a powerful piece because what he's simply saying here is that if you have received Christ and you, you made him Lord of your life, you have to lead a life worthy of divine calling. And this is what we call the grace period. God gives us grace to grow. Of the grace, amen, inside of grace, you'll find that you can repent. Inside of grace, you can find out that you can forgive and forgive others. In grace, you can mess up, you can mess up, but then repeat and get back in alignment with what God has for you in grace. So grace simply says that no one could fail in this process if their heart is sincere and turning in terms in terms of walking in a place of maturity with God. There's a saying I always say no one fails in God's school. It just takes some of us a little longer than others. And the school of life is what God is about. Jesus said, I come that you may have what life and have it more abundantly. Religion has made it about a church and a building about service and how we do service. No, it's about how you learn how to live life. People are struggling how to live life. And if I can learn how to live life God's way, then you know what? Life becomes a little bit more easier because we're doing things his way and not our way. Can y'all say amen? So he says here, he says that therefore, he says, walk and lead a life worthy of divine calling to which you have been called and with behavior. Somebody say behavior. Behavior. That is credited to the summons of God's service. Now, let me pause there for a minute because here he's still pointing to the renewing of mind points to a change of new ideas, new attitude. 
that reflects behavior. So there are some people that say, well, I'm saved, but they still curse. Now, some people will say, well, they ain't saved. No, they're saved. They just ain't renewed their mind. <laughs> I mean, we keep it real according to the text. We're, we're simply saying that they haven't what, matured into the understanding the lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ and how they have to renew their minds from off of self and on to his will, which is his word. Can y'all say amen? Now, I'm going to prove that in just a minute because it's going to show, uh, again, a reflection of how the renewing of the mind is tied to your conduct, attitude, and your behavior, which is producing what we call fruits, fruits or behavior that reflect your relationship in God. And the church needs to talk about this a lot because there's a lot of people who are stuck in the mindset that believe I don't have to do anything with my behavior. All I got to do is ask God to forgive me over and over again. And yes, he will forgive you, but that doesn't change who you are. Because change requires us involving ourselves in the process. Can I go a little bit further? Yeah. It says here in the second verse, living and becoming, it said living as you become you. I like that because you know what? I thought we were already us. <laughs> no, becoming you and him. Living with complete lowliness. Now here comes the behavior. Somebody said lowliness. Oh. Said lowliness of mind, which is humility. Meekness. Somebody say meekness. Then it says unselfishness. Somebody say unselfishness. Then it says gentleness. Somebody say gentleness. Somebody say a mildness. It says with patience. Then it says, I'm going to read this, bearing one another and making, uh, making allowances because you love one another. Now this is a process. Somebody say this is a process. So we're talking about walking worthy of a life of your calling with behavior that is credited to the summons of the call of your service to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Then he says, walk, life, behavior. This is all predicated upon one's mind. One mind. So it's, it's through the mind that behavior traits are exhibited through our bodies. It's through the mind and then the body expresses it. It's through the mind and the body expresses it. All right. Now. Go with one, one more scripture with me. First Peter four, one and two. Hallelujah. This is good word today. Amen. First Peter. This is word either you're going to choke on. <laughs> Come on now. Come on. Or it's a word you're going to swallow and you have to get some drink behind it, you know. You know how you're eating that food sometime and you know eating it tastes so good and then sometimes you get kind of dry up here in your pipes and you know you got to get some water down and help flush it down. This is the kind of word, that, this is the word that grows people up. This is the word that will challenge you that there's something that I need to do and that keeps us from looking at somebody else's immaturity and realize that there's some places in us that we need to grow ourselves. Can y'all say amen? So 1 Peter chapter number 1, is that what I said? 1 Peter 4, 4 and 1, 4 and 1. Four and one, four and one, four, one and two. It says in first Peter four, one and two in Amp five. So since Christ has suffered for us in the flesh. For us, for you, arm yourself with the same thought, purpose, patience to rather than suffer to fail to please God for whosoever has suffered in the flesh. Having the mind of Christ is done with intentional sin. All right. Has stopped pleasing himself. The world and pleases of God. Now, this is, tells us here that if your mind is not renewed, you're still trying to please yourself and the world. Mm, come, on. come on now. See, this is we need to if you don't identify the trappings in, in terms of what your mind can fall into, then you can be deceived in that and don't even realize it because right. it feels right to you. How many know it ain't supposed to feel right to you? You're supposed to know this right, whether it's right in terms of what God says, because that's what's important that we're learning how to do. So, again, he says here that you have stopped pleasing yourself, the world. But now you please God. It says so that the reason why is so, so that he can no longer spend the rest of his time in his natural living by his own human appetites and desires, but lives for what God wills. Yeah. So you got to ask yourself, who, who, what are you living for? Are you living for what God wills for you or are you living for what you're willing for yourself? Because there's a lot of people still willing for what they want. And, and that's OK, because when you mature, you're going to realize God's going to show you that his way is always better. 
And I like when God's way is always better. It's in the process of you learning, amen, how to do his will and not your own will. Now, I said all this to read this here to remind us that it says here the word suffer means not so much uh, that you're in pain, but the suffering is the denying aspect of it. See, there's some things I have to tell myself, no. The most anointed word that you and I can have when we take charge is when we control through our mind and knowing what God's will is. And when God's will says, Ron, no, I should say no also. I shouldn't say maybe. I shouldn't say I don't know. I shouldn't say, you know what, I'm going to try it first. <laughs> Are y'all hearing me? See, that's what's wrong with Adam. Adam, in the, in the beginning, that's what happened to him. God told him, don't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Listen, listen, listen. He's a, he's, this is not legalism. This is I'm trying to save your life. Amen. See, legalism makes you pull like you. I got to do it. If I don't do it, then I'm not going to be pleasing to God. No, God said, if you don't do it, you're not going to be able to live. Amen. He said, in the day that you eat of that fruit, you will surely die. Come on. And he did die spiritually. He didn't die naturally because if he did, he shouldn't have been breathing anymore. Something died in him that was closed off and it could never be open again until somebody came. <laughs> that was a substitute that went <laughs> that went and dealt with the issue and not with the problem. Because the issue was he crept over his soul, got dark. And the darkness, listen, how I know his soul got dark is remember new ideals bring what? New attitudes. But also you can track a person's mindset by what comes out their mouth. So God know he done messed up. But look at God. God is so good that he sees his child mess up. He knows the only way he going to get back he fell with his mouth. His mouth is going to recover him Hallelujah. if he takes ownership because I'm going to help him because God said, I'm all knowing. I'm omniscient. I'm not present. So I already know he fell. So if I was so disgusted with him, why would I go and hunt him down in the garden and ask him, use your power to get delivered? But let me help you first. <laughs> Did you eat of the tree that I told you not to eat of? This is the question of repentance. It wasn't a question of location. I know where you're at. I know where you're at. You can't get outside of it. I know where you are. I'm asking you, do you know where you are right now? Can you prove to yourself that you messed up? And can you tell me? Because tell me what I already know. Tell on yourself. Don't suffer. Deny yourself. Don't don't slip. Now, come on. Tell me, did you eat of the tree? I told you not. And he said, the woman. We're still blaming people for other things that we need to take responsibility for, but we don't want to take responsibility for because that means we have to tell on ourselves. And you can't get free till you tell on yourself. The woman, the woman, the woman, the woman you gave me. And what guy, see, he's being, he's getting real cynical now. Somebody said, what do you mean? He said, listen, this is what he's really saying. God, you created me first. It was me and you in the garden. It was you that said that man is not good, that he, he, he live alone. You put me to sleep. You gave me this woman. I didn't ask for her. You gave me that woman. See, you always make you defend your place of you not depending on what you know you did wrong. Excuse after excuse after excuse and never dealing with the issue my God, that's at hand. And you need change, change and you but change and you use the same technique. You heard something, said something. Then you did something. He said, the woman you gave me threw the woman under the bus. <laughs> We like throwing people under the bus. 
We don't grow up right. We throw our parents under the bus. We go to school. We don't like the teacher. We throw the teacher under the bus. We got to stop law enforcement. We throw them under. We throw everybody under the bus. Don't realize the real issue is that you gave me the fruit thereof, and I did eat. And it's like if you listen and track words, this is important because tracking words will help you identify whether you're on track or off track or whether the enemy is trying to deceive you. Jesus tracked the word one day when Jesus was tempted by the devil. Temptation is not sin. Temptation is the invitation to do sin. He said, if thou be the son of God, cast these stones into bread. He tracked what words came and he said these words were not coming from the father these words are coming from the spirit and the spirit here is what the spirit of the enemy and he says you know man should not live by bread alone in other words you're trying to get me to perform to know who I am That's what's wrong today. Everybody on Facebook for different reasons. There's some good, there's some bad. But people, I want you to know who I am by me performing. That's not who you are. That's what you're doing. Sometimes what you're doing is not good because that's not who you are. So Jesus said, I'm not going to play your games with you. He said, it is written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. So what happened in scripture? Stay with me. I'm still, I haven't lost what I was talking about with Adam. Amen. God was simply saying, listen, all you got to do is repent. Amen. You know, the hardest thing for you to do is to tell on yourself. That's the hardest thing. We want to act like we know everything. We don't know nothing. But you know what? I'm the first to say I need some help. <laughs> Amen. I'm a preacher of the gospel, yes. I'm trying to teach people how to walk by faith, yes. But it ain't easy because you know why? Everybody don't want to go. Amen. Some people rather stay at home. They're taking me. I, ain't, I don't feel comfortable coming coming to church, but then they're all out on on out, out shopping and they're doing this and they're doing that and they're doing this and doing that. Then they make an excuse not to be where they need, where God said you need to be, which is now God says it's time to come back in the house. No, no, I, I don't feel comfortable. Well, you're in the mall. Come on. You visiting folks. You're all over the place. Oh, y'all hitting something because I want people to understand that. Because what? What? Once you make a decisive decision, you don't let nothing get in the way of that relationship. That's what happened with Adam. Listen. Are y'all still with me? So the hardest thing in terms of control, renewing of the mind is to tell yourself No. I had to tell myself, no, I got one wife. I don't need any more. I'm almost done. Let me see how much time I got. I'm, I'm going to have to pick this up next week. I ain't going to finish it. Glory to God. Then I have to tell my, my appetites and my desires, no, you, you know what? No, you can't have that. See, I'm denying myself now. That's do a decision. Are you listening to me? Yeah, yeah. You smoke weed, I tell myself, no, I ain't. Mm -mm. I ain't doing that no more. I remember meeting a guy, I never forget this guy. He was downtown, he was asking for some money for some cigarettes. No, that's really, that's what he was wanting, but let's go back. He said he was hungry. And he knew the word, because he came up, he knew how we were talking. He said, y'all, 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 y'all say born again, y'all. Oh, yeah. He said, praise God. God is good. He started talking that language. God is good. God is good. He said, uh, can, can you uh, give me some money? I'm hungry. I said, we took him over the subway. So right away, we didn't give him the money. We took him, <laughs> gave him some, something to eat. He had asked me a question. He said, you know, I've been praying that God take away these cigarettes. He said, I really, I go to church, I pray, I've been praying and praying. God won't take the cigarettes away. So he asked the preacher, he said, why won't God take the cigarettes away? So I stood there, paused for a minute, I was duped, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> but when you have a relationship with God, you can just quietly pray and he'll drop thoughts in your mind. New ideas. New ideas. 
something just dropped in my mind. And the question was, and it sounded like what something with Jesus to do. I asked, he asked me a question. I asked him a question. I said, what do you do when somebody offers you a cigarette? He paused for a minute. He said, he, he, he. Then he want to change the subject because mentally he got it. But when you say no, when somebody offers you something, the answer should be still no. So he hadn't decipherly made the decision in his mind that he was done with it. Because when you're done with it, you keep telling yourself no. Because no is the safeguard to causing that door to be open because now you have closed it and your mind has been renewed to something else. Now that power in you has been invested that you now have dominion over that plant and the plant don't have dominion over you. Amen. Thank you. Is that all right? Yes, Are y'all getting anything out of this? Yes, I, 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 listen, listen. Whosoever suffer in the flesh, having the same mind. Jesus suffered. In other words, the suffering was not so much pain, which it was at the end of his ministry, but he suffered when he changed his mind. Amen. We have to change our mind all the time, because if not, you allow other things to control you and not God control you. One more scripture. and We're almost done. And I'm going to pick this up maybe last next week. The result is in terms of what pleasing God has to do with God's will. Somebody said pleasing God. Has to deal with God's will. Now, let me give you this formula before I have you read the scripture. The will of God is the word of God. Amen. Say that to somebody while you're sitting. Look at him say, the will of God, the will of God is, the word of God. is the word of God. So if you want to know God's word, or no, if you want to know his will, you got to know his what? Word. The word. Now, don't be intimidated by the Bible. I mean, when I first got saved, I didn't know how to find. If they just said find Deuteronomy, I would probably be looking in Revelations, <laughs> the end of the book. I didn't know anything about the Bible. You look at me now, you're probably like, man, he yeah. See, but it's through repetition. Repetition is the friend of education. And when you repeat a thing and get the word in your spirit, it's designed to help you understand. When you understand, you have the ability to walk in what God says you need to walk in. So I, I get my Bible. The first book that I looked at was the book of John. I just read the book of John. And I found out he was the youngest disciple of Jesus Christ. So he didn't know a lot, but he had a whole lot of love. He stayed in the attachment mode with the Lord Jesus Christ. So the will of God, somebody say the will of God, the will of God. is the word of God. The last scripture I'll have you look at, turn to Matthew 11 and 28, and we're going to look at the process here. The process that Jesus said for maturing after you receive Jesus Christ is pointed to the renewing of the mind. And that's going to prove it by the scripture. I'm not going to make anything up. I'm going to read just what it says and expound upon it. Matthew 11 and verse 28 through 30. We're going to read that and then we're going to close out here in just a few minutes. Now, Matthew 11 and 28. Are you there? Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, this up there, this is a universal call. It's tied to John 3 and 16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son to whosoever believe in him should not perish, but will have what? Everlasting life. Jesus died for the sins of the world. Generation after generation after generation after generation. In other words, he is the door where we come in and get saved, get forgiveness and stand in a place of relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And now we've been called king's kids under the covenant banner of his blood. And now he's given us promises to walk in this life as well as the next. Now, this is what he's saying. Come and receive that. And if you receive that, you've entered into what we call rest. How many like resting? I got in a habit when I go to sleep at night, I look at the wife. And I can't real softly say, Lord, bless us to have some sweet sleep tonight. Because <laughs> I found out sleep, I mean, sweet sleep is like therapy. <laughs> is that all right? Healing takes place when you sleep. Oh, I could talk about that. You know, Adam went to sleep and woke up and had a wife. <laughs> so you don't know what God doing when you sleep. And praise God. When you sleep, the sleep that he has for you. OK, so if somebody say rest. I'm almost, then he says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Come on now. And I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. Wait a minute. The first verse, your spirit gets saved. 
This verse said your soul gets saved. Do you mean to tell me there's two rests? There's one rest for my spirit. There's another rest where it's for my soul. Well, how do I attain the first rest? First rest, he said, come to me because I'm your substitute. (laughs) I'm your substitute for sin and I'll give you my righteousness and because I give you my righteousness, now you're one with me and I'm one with you. Now, that's not all to the process. Now he says in the second verse, he says, take my yoke upon you. (laughs) Then he says, learn of me. Now, now learn means what? I need to renew my mind. And the renewing of mind is doing, done to us understanding what God wills for us that was designed to change our conduct, our attitude, and behavior. Then he says, then you will find this rest, this rest for your soul. Then he says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The devil, sometimes he knows. Let me say this. I'm going to be very close. I got, I'm getting tongue-tied, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting excited. The, the devil knows, listen, if he can't keep you from salvation, he'll keep you from renewing your mind. He know you're going to enter into that one rest, but he'll fight you tooth and nail to keep you from entering into that next rest. Because the next rest puts you in a place where you understand that your identity is not your identity. Your identity is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you have identified through association and relationship that have put you in a place of receiving an inheritance and the inheritance that God has for us right now that you have and all of us have is learning how to walk in God's favor. The favor of God is when God says, I'm not only going to go before you, but I'm going to be behind you. I'm going to be on your right and your left. Anything you need, it's going to be not you working in the Lord. It's me and you working together. And 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 one of the things I realized in that in that process, God knows how to touch people's hearts to give you favor. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Because there's a scripture in the Bible, Proverbs 21. One. Let me stop here because I'm getting excited. It said the king's heart is in his hand. And he turns it like the rivers of water. So I've been in places where I've asked people for things and without God giving me favor. And they told me no. But once I understood I had a relationship with God and I acknowledged God and put him in the process of my renewing my mind, knowing that I'm one with him. He's one with me. And therefore, whatever I need, according to his will, his will is his word. The, his will is his word. So I need a job. So his will says, you know, I'm going to bless you with a job because this is will for me to have a job because I can't be prosperous without a job. Y'all ain't saying anything. So you know what? God gives what? He touches the, the person that's uh, interviewed, touches their heart and gives me favor. Amen. I remember I took a temp job and I'm closing for my third time. I took a I took a I took a temp temp job and the temp job that I took, uh, they said, listen, you're going to work at this this place, Abbott. That's where I was working. They said, listen, um, uh, it takes a while for you to get hired full time. When they told me that, they didn't know who they was talking to. Come on. Touch and they said, renewing of the mind is to know. See, they didn't know I was just, I'm just uh, anybody. I'm a king's kid. <laughs> I don't have to walk around there tell them, I'm a king's kid. No, no, no. Don't get arrogant and prideful. Amen. Hold it in your own knowledge. Hold it in your own mindset. Amen. Let it guide and guard you. Amen. And govern you. I, and you know what? I knew then when they said that, I could hear it. It didn't hit right. I said, that ain't going to happen. Amen. I think I worked there a month and I went on full time. Everybody was like, hi. Amen. How you get on full time? Who you know? Who you know? I said, well, I know somebody. <laughs> I know some. Touch your neighbor and say, I know somebody. I know somebody. Listen, Hi. let me just pray. We're in this word right, right here. We're going to pick this up next week because we're going to talk about some other things I think will help you in your walk and your relationship. Father, we want to thank you for those who are listening today. Those who have received a word of faith today. This word of faith, again, is designed to get us out of ourselves into what you will for us. The will of God is the word of God. The more we're exposed to your word, it reveals who you are, what you expect from us. And we know now the problem that we have is not so much the enemy himself. It's sometimes our mindset, a train of thought that's not correct, Father. Help us to change the channel and help us to get right on the proper things to think about and to meditate on so you can process your will through us. We thank you even now for allowing us to obtain that place of spiritual growth. It is a place of process. It's a place that we do day by day. It's a place that we understand it's not our will, but your will needs to be done. So, Lord, we ask that you forgive us for times that we have failed, times that we have missed the mark, times that we just gave up and just thought anything and everything. We ask that you would give us a fresh start, even today and going this week. This we pray. This we ask in Jesus' name. Everybody should say. Amen. 
Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. Now listen, there's two things I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to let you know that if there's someone here that needs to receive prayer for anything, don't leave the service. Just hang around and then come up here after service and we'll pray for you. Is that all right? So what we're going to do now, uh, we're going to receive an offering. If, there, if, if you haven't gotten an offering envelope or if you want one, you can do so. We'll make sure you get one. We're going to receive an offering today, and this is our tithes and offering. A lot of you may be taught about the tithes and offering, trying to figure out what that's about. But the tithes and offering helps support the ministry in terms of what we're doing. So if you need an offering envelope, you can raise your hand. This is a voluntary act. If you choose not to, that's fine. We're not here to put any pressure on anyone. But it's up to you in terms of what you want to do and what you want to give. With that being said, uh, I think at this time we're going to have uh, uh, Deacon Everett. He's going to come. There's another offering that we're going to receive also. Yes. Amen. You can leave it on. Mm-hmm. operates by the love and the care of the people that, that listen and, and participate. And we know that you tithe and that you're supposed to tithe. That's your baseline. Think of it that right. way. Right. Amen. That's what the Lord requires you to do. And we expect that. But one of the things he also says, if you want to give and give in love, you can also give an offering. And what we'd like to do is if you enjoy the sermon today, if you have any extra funds, anything that you can spare, give it to the love have a tithing envelope, there is a list on there that says love offering. You can add it there. If you're listening, there just add, go to our website. There's a donation place in there. Or if, you're, if you don't have it right now and you want to give later, go to kficc.com and look at the donation area. There's a place that you can give there as well. So if you would, I'll give you a minute to fill those out so that we can uh, go ahead and collect the offer. Praise God. Amen. So with that being said, um, give me a few minutes. Some of you are filling out your envelopes. Give you a chance to do that. Um, I'm thankful and grateful for uh, uh, what God is doing in your life. Amen. Amen. Thank God for some of you that were out yesterday. We had a chance to go to, uh, what's the name of the facility you're at? Um, okay. We had an opportunity to go and uh, minister to a group of people. Some of them came out today. We appreciate you guys for being here. And um, I just loved on them yesterday. I, and I received their love also. And we had a great time. And Ajimu, he did a good job. And Pastor Teresa did a good job also. So we're excited. How many know we're in training for raining? Training for raining. Schooling for ruling. Praise God. And I'm so glad that, you know what, God doesn't look at as failures. He looks at as children that are trying to understand the process of walking by faith and not by sight. So with that, we're just grateful. So if you don't mind, just, uh, if you're done with filling out your offering envelope, amen, uh, just kind of kind of slip it up in the air, if you would, please, for a minute. I'm going to say some things. I'm going to bless the offering. How this works, usually we receive an offering, but you're giving. It's not so much what's in the, in the envelope. It's your obedience that releases what goes in the envelope. So with that being said, there's something that we pronounce over those who are giving. Those who are on Facebook, just go to www.kficc.com and look for the donate button. And you can go through the process. That's a secure site in case you want to give in any area. So with that being said, my seed sowed today. My seed sowed today. My offering sowed today. My offering sowed today. My tithe sowed today. My tithe sowed today. Will entitle me to receive. Gifts and surprises, Gifts and surprises. Discounts, and dividends. discounts and dividends, divine favor upon my family, upon my family. Job, promotions. job promotions, and new jobs being created, and new jobs being created. Divine, health divine health benefits, academic success, academic success. Our, children our children are blessed, our church is blessed, our, church is blessed. our debt is paid off, our debt is paid off. And, our and our net worth is increasing because of my obedience. I receive these blessings now. In Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you for our service today. Thank you for those who have attended. We thank you for even those who are on Facebook. We pray even now that you bless the word of faith in terms of reminding us that we have some work to do in terms of 
understanding what it means to grow maturity has to do with our mind. Help us to renew our minds daily, taking on new ideas and new attitudes and new conduct, attitude and behavior. And we forever thank you for what you're doing in our life. Till we meet again, we ask that you would bless those who are here, bless those on Facebook. This we pray and ask in Jesus name. Everybody should say. Amen. All right. If anybody.